Good day students, welcome to our e-learning for today. And for today's video, our lesson is Resources and Economy of the South. So we're going to talk about Resources and Economy of Southern USA. And what are the things that we're going to do for today's lesson? So, number one, I want you to watch until the end of this video. Number two, if you are done watching the video, I want you to answer the attach um, file in your class dojo. And if you are completed with it, you can send it back to my email so that I can check it. And finally, on uh, Wednesday, um, you will have Socrative task or assignment in April 1, 2020. So, I want you to pause this video and prepare the following materials. These are our materials for today. Um, the Social Studies book, this YouTube uh, video, your Social Studies notebook, and of course, your class dojo. And if you are prepared, let's start our lesson. Again, we are talking about Southern USA, the, the region uh, of the South. As you can see here in the in the map, you can see 14 states of uh, USA. And you can see Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and of course, Florida. So we, we've discussed before in Everglades uh, forever in our reading, Florida. And we discussed some parts of Georgia and Arkansas in our last topic. So as you can see, I want you to um, pause this video and copy all the details here, the state. Alright, so if you have taken time to study this, this map, let's go to our lesson for today. Now, again, our topic for today uh, is resources and economy. So the resources and the economy of the southern USA or the south. Let's focus on this one. So let's... A read. So remember the vocabulary for today that you're going to uh, to learn is uh, dam, producer, consumer, scarcity, and opportunity cost. So you will we will be focusing on this vocabulary for today. So build on what you know. What snacks do you like? So what snacks do you like? So like for example, if you like uh, chicken wings or let's say um, peanut butter or something. So others like peanut butter or orange juice. So the raw materials, so the materials that they use to make peanut butter, chicken wings, or orange juice uh, of these products are actually grown in the south. Production in the south. So the word production is coming from the word produce. So how do they produce their goods or, and or materials in the south? So the main idea here is that people use the natural resources of the south to fuel a strong economy. So they are, the people in the south are using their natural resources. Again, what are natural resources? Natural resources are the things that, um, that are in nature like rivers, water, mountains, rocks, oil and gas, forest, fish. So things that are not man-made are called natural resources. Now let's continue reading. So like people everywhere, southerners, so the, the people in the south are, uh, are, are called southerners use resources to produce goods and services. So remember these words, um, to produce goods and services. So they produce goods and services. So I think um, you remember the meaning of goods. Goods are materials that we can use. So like for, for example, a chair, books. So you can use chair, you can use a table, and you can use food. So those are what we call goods. Let's continue reading. For example, they use water through moving through them to make electricity. So these southerners, these people from the south, they use their resources, like here they use water moving through dams to make electricity. So to make electricity, they use a dam. So what is a dam? So here it's, it's this defined as a dam is a barrier built across a waterway to control the flow and level of water. So here you can see in a picture, a picture of a dam. So this is a moving water. So coming from maybe a higher place like a mountain, moving down. So it's very fast. Now, the, the people uh, made a barricade or a, a barrier. So a barrier built across a waterway. So they blocked the water and uh, letting only a little bit of wa water to flow. Now, why are they blocking this water, this moving water? Because when they block this water, they are actually making or generating electricity. So for energy. So inside the dam, as you can see here, the water flows below. So see here. The water flows below, so if this is the water here, it will flow here in this small tube and it will turn this turbine, okay? If the turbine turns um, fast, okay, or hard, 
it will produce electricity in this generator and this generator will go to this wire and to the transformer and to these cables going to your houses so so remember they are doing this they are blocking they are barricading the moving water to produce electricity okay to produce um, energy for you to use at home all right so going back so remember that this is a dam and people are using a lot of resources so what are the things that they use all right let's do this we have uh, dams show how natural human and capital resources work together so there are three resources here first natural resources two human resources and the third one last but not the least we have the capital resources so these three resources are working together to build the dam okay so in this case in this dam we have water water is natural so the water moving water is the natural resources uh, people so people the engineers the architects the people who build this place this dam are what we call uh, human resources and finally the machines the tools they use to build this dam is what we call the capital resources so in this case water people and machines work together to produce electricity so for example here the tennessee valley authority or tva has 29 dams that make power so in in the picture so in this picture here in the uh, in this page you can see um two resources the one that is missing is the human resources so three resources capital resource natural resource and human resources okay so next page we go to this page and we're going to focus on um, goods and services from natural resources and producers and consumers let's discuss all right so here you can see a table of the natural resources again natural res resources are from nature and these are not man-made so rich soil waterways warm climate oil and gas coal deposits forests these are uh, natural resources and these are the goods and services for number one rich soil so here you can see uh, an example of rich soil so a dark top soil so when you have a very rich soil so you can use it for farming uh, cotton fabric will be produced orange juice will produce peaches pecans and peanuts so if you have a very good rich soil you can produce a lot of plants like this all right waterways which means can be lakes rivers whatsoever you can they can be getting fish sticks sea salt boating and water power so as you can see in this picture you can see boating this is a waterway in the south so they use boats whatsoever to move goods or for transportation so that's a service or a good based or getting that you get from waterways next warm climate and warm climate if you have a very good climate so warm climate means it's not too cold it's not too hot so with this good climate with this warm climate they can have uh, amusement parks golf vacation hotels so you can see here this is as an example of a warm climate it's a very good picture here so you have a very nice view so here you can put amusement parks they can do golf or you can put a hotel here for vacation next oil and gas so like qatar the south is also producing oil and gas so if you have oil and gas you have gasoline or petrol the one that you use in your car and plastics so there's a lot of different plastic materials that are produced also so this is a picture of um, a building getting the oil and gas from the from the ocean next coal deposits so when you have coal coal uh, look looks like this so it's uh it looks like a rock and it's black when you burn this you will have electricity so the heat transferred will be producing a lot of energy electricity and finally forest so when you have a lot of forest you have a lot of trees for wood and with this wood you can produce a lot of paper and a lot of lumber so lumber is a wood that they use for construction so to build offices to build houses so these are the natural resources and the goods and services let's go to the next um, part of the page our topic here is uh, producers and consumers let's read in manufacturing so remember manufacturing is producing something producers turn raw materials into goods so what is a producer so a producer is someone who makes or sells goods or services for consumers so let's dis dis discuss this so when you're a person who makes or sells goods to another person you are called the producer so for example when you have 
uh, a company and your company is making t-shirts and you're selling t-shirts or you're selling shoes to other people, you are called a producer. So when you're selling something to another person, you are called a producer. Remember, a producer is someone who makes or sells something. Like when you sell um, t-shirts or shoes, when you make t-shirts or shoes and then sell it to other people, you are called a producer. Okay? So, what is a consumer? Let's read. A consumer is someone who buys or uses goods and services. So when you buy something, so when you go to a shop and you buy a phone, and when you go to a shop and you buy apples or chocolates or t-shirts or shoes, you are actually a consumer because, remember, you're a consumer when you are someone who buys or uses services from other people, from producers. So when you buy something, anything, you are called a consumer. Alright, so let's continue reading. People can be both producers and consumers. Suppose, for example, a manufacturer in North Carolina produces chairs. Before making a chair, the manufacturer will consume or buy wood, glue, and labor. So that manufacturer is both a consumer and a producer. So as you can see here, the manufacturer is both consumer and producer. So people can become both producer and a consumer. Why? So, example, here... Uh, I will repeat the, the the explanation. If you are making a chair, so if you're making a chair, you you are uh, a consumer. Why? Because you need to buy. So remember, someone who buys, you're going to buy wood, you're going to buy glue, you're going to buy labor, or you're go, going to buy tools. So if you're someone who's buying, you are a consumer. So after that, if you bought all these materials, you're going to make the chair and you're going to sell the chair. So if you're selling that chair and you sold that chair, you are actually a producer. So, you can be both producer and consumer. Alright? Next, let's read. The South has many resources that producers can use to make products. Okay, so like people grow more peanuts, cotton, rice, and sugar cane here than in any other region. So, they are producing a lot here than in any other region. So, the South is producing a lot of this. So, remember, they are growing more peanuts for peanut butter, maybe. They're uh, producing a lot of cotton, they're producing a lot of rice, and finally, they're producing a lot of sugar cane than any other place in USA. So they're also uh, using um, coal and producing coal and oil lie below the ground. So they are getting that by, uh, by using machines, for example. So fish and selfish uh, live in waters. So this is the picture of fish and selfish, and they're using these resources. All right, to produce uh, goods and services. Producers use all of these resources. Every year, for example, Texas produces nearly 5 million bales of raw cotton. So remember that. So they're producing a lot of cotton, like I showed you. A lot of cotton, millions of cotton. So in other southern states, workers in textile mills spin the cotton. They produce cotton yarn. So as I can show you right now, this is an example of a cotton yarn. Okay, so they produce a lot of cotton yarn. And, and then other manufacturers use the, this yarn, so this yarn, to produce what? Clothes, t-shirts, towels, and other cotton products. So as you can see, there are three places here. Um, in Texas, they produce the raw cotton, and it will be become cotton yarn like this. And this cotton yarn will be used by the factories to produce clothes, t-shirts, towels, and other cotton products. Let's continue to the next page. So... This is the page, A Diverse Economy. So let's uh, read. So the main idea here is producers and consumers make choices about how to use resources. Let's continue reading. The South's economy once relied mainly on farming. So before, 100 years ago, they, they only uh, focused on farming. So until now, farming is still very important. Texas, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida ranks in the top 10 states for farm income. So remember that. So they are farming. So the main, uh, until now, the main um, industry or is actually agriculture. So they're producing a lot of food. Now, what are their products? So leading products include rice, cotton, tobacco, sugarcane, oranges, chicken, hogs, and cattle. So these are their products. So in today's economy, many other industries also thrive in the region, rich with natural and human resources. So right now, you can see here, South's economy. So the South's economy, ha they have farming and because of its modern times they have also different industries 
from the second paragraph to the last paragraph, you will see that um, there are many industries except farming, not only farming, but there's a lot of industries in the South. So let's continue. Many Southerners work in manufacturing and service industries. So the first industry is actually uh, manufacturing and service industries. So you can see here a picture of manufacturing and service industries. In Piedmont region, many people work in textile mills. So this is a textile mill. As you can see, people here, there's a lot of people, thousands of people work here in the textile mill. What do they do? They use cotton, they make clothes, they make t-shirts, they make anything that you can wear or anything that you can uh, use at home. Now, let's continue reading. In North Carolina alone, the cotton industry employs nearly 75,000 people. So that's a lot of people working in this factory, in this industry, which we call the manufacturing and service industries. So um, these workers make yarn, clothes, carpets, and rugs. So as you can see here, the, the, the first important industry is number one, manufacturing and service industries. An example is cotton industry. Let's continue. So millions of acres of forest in Alabama, Arkansas, and Georgia provide jobs in lumber and paper industries. Okay, so the second industry is what we call the lumber and paper industries. Let's continue reading. Top coal mining states include West Virginia, Kentucky, and Texas. Coal and other resources help create power and energy. Thousands of Southerners work in the oil industry. As you can see here, we have another industry and we can find it in West Virginia, Kentucky, and Texas. All right, so we have mining and oil industry. So the third one, I put them together so you can see here in this paragraph, coal mining and oil industry. So let's continue reading. Texas and Florida rank in the top four states for aerospace employment. So, uh, focusing on this industry. Let's go to the fourth industry. So, the fourth industry is what we call tourism and service industry. It also plays a vital role. One of the leading service industries in the South is ground and air transportation. So, ground, bus, taxi, air transportation. We have planes, airplanes. All right, that's the fourth, um, that's the fourth industry, tourism and service industries. So, you have two, three, and four. Hundreds of thousands of Southerners work for the government. So most Southerners are actually working for the U.S. government. The U.S. government, including the military, is one of the largest employers in the South. So they work, people in the South work mostly in the military or the U.S. government. Most government employees in the South live in Texas, Virginia, and Florida. So to summarize this idea, you can see here the employment or the work of people or the jobs people are in the military and in the US government. That's it, let's go to the last page. This is the last page and the title is Making Economic um, Choices. Let's focus on it. So let's read, consumers decide whether or not to buy something. Producers try to provide goods and services that consumers will want to buy. So producers decide what resources to use. They also set prices for their goods and services. So as you can see here, consumers decide whether or not to buy something. So remember, people who buy they, they, they decide what to buy. That's why producers think of what consumers want or need. So as a businessman, you should be thinking what consumers might need so that they will be um, getting or buying from you. And remember this, they also set prices for their goods and services. So when the producers make something, or let's say making shoes, so you're the one, if you're the producer, you are the one uh, making or setting the price. Remember this idea. The prices are set by producers, and these prices are affected mainly uh, by many factors. Like example, it can be affected by scarcity. So what is scarcity? Let's read. Scarcity affects prices. Scarcity means there are not enough resources to provide a product or service that people want. For example, suppose a winter frost hurt orange groves in Florida. With a scarcity of oranges, the price of orange juice would go up. So what is what is the meaning of what is the meaning of scarcity? So scarcity is when there's a less number of, of, of a natural resource, okay? So if you're making um, shoes, for example, if there's a low number or low supply, low supply of uh, leather, you cannot produce a lot of shoes. And that will really affect the price and the price will go up, okay? Let's continue reading. As a consumer, you could decide to buy a cheaper kind of juice. If you buy expensive orange juice, you will have 
less money to spend on something else. So this is an example of opportunity cost. An opportunity cost is what someone gives up to get something else. So remember this idea. So when you have to buy a phone, okay? So most of you will be thinking, oh, I will buy I iPhone 11. Um, you're going to spend a lot more. So that's an opportunity cost when you buy an iPhone X or an iPhone 11. It's because you were going to, uh, to give up something to buy uh, a, a very expensive phone. So you have a choice actually. So there are a lot of phones there which are cheaper, but you tended, uh, you wanted the, the, the one that's expensive. That is what we call opportunity cost. Okay, so remember in an opportunity cost, you are giving up more to get something else. So you, you're going to give up more money to get uh, a better but pricier or expensive, more expensive product. Okay, so let's continue reading. Every economic choice has an opportunity cost like consumers, businesses also face opportunity cost so remember both businessmen and consumers the people who buy um, they face opportunity cost suppose an orange juice company buys new equipment expensive new equipment the company would have less money to spend on other things such as a new building so here uh, an example of opportunity cost is when a company is buying new equipment so they will buy a new equipment they will spend more money to it and they will have less money to, let's say, um, get another building or build another building. So that is what we call an opportunity cost. So let's summarize the, our, our ideas for today. So this is a summary. So producers is in the middle. So all producers are using resources. Producers also, when they are selling or making stuff, they are making choices. Producers also create goods and services for consumers. And producers also can also be consumers. That's the summary of our lesson. Let's go to why it matters. So why does it matter? The choices that producers and consumers make determine how resources are used in the nation's economy. So remember, when people keep on trading, the economy will grow. And I want you to read on your own the lesson review. And remember, some of these questions will come out in your Socrative task on Wednesday. So for example, um, I want you to know what's the meaning of producer. I want you to know the meaning of consumer. So I think that's our lesson for today. I hope you understand all the details that I discussed. All right. Thank you for watching. This is Mr. John signing off. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>